In this video, I'm going to demonstrate one of the new features for Database and Memory in 12C Release 2. The new feature is called Distribute for Service, and what it's going to allow you to do is to limit where an object is populated into memory in a rack environment. By default, in a rack environment, a table that's populated into memory is actually broken up into pieces, and a different piece of the table is populated into each of the in-memory column stores across the rack cluster effectively allowing the in-memory column store to have a shared nothing architecture in a rack environment. If you don't want to do that, if you don't want to utilize all of the CPU and memory resources across the rack cluster for a given application, but you want to limit that application to a subset of nodes, you can do that by using a combination of this new feature and database services. So let me show you an example. I've got a two node rack environment running in Docker on my laptop more about running Rack in Docker in a later post. But for now, just know it's a two-node Rack environment. And I've gone ahead and created three Rack services in that environment. IM1, which is running on instance one, IM2, running on instance two, and IM all that can connect to either instance. I'm going to go ahead now and connect to the database. And I'm going to connect on the service IM1. So I'm connected to the first uh, rack node in my cluster. So let's take a quick look and see what's going on in the in-memory column store on the rack environment. And I'm able to do that by looking at the GV dollar performance views. So I'm looking at GV dollar IM segments. And as you can see, the in-memory column store is currently empty across the rack environment. So let's go ahead and take advantage of this new feature and populate three of the tables from the sales schema into the in-memory column store. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to specify the in-memory attribute on the three tables, customers, products, and sales. And I'm going to specify each of those in-memory attributes with a priority, which controls when an object is populated into memory. So I've specified the in-memory attribute with a priority high on the customers table, and I've asked it to be distributed for service IM1. Remember, the IM1 service is only allowed to run on rack node one or instance one in my environment. For the products table, I specified an in-memory attribute with a priority medium, meaning it's slightly less important than the customer's table. And I've asked it to be distributed for service IM2, which means it should be populated into memory on our second instance or our second rack node. And then finally, I've given the sales table an in-memory attribute with a priority high, but no distribute for service clause, which means part of the sales table should appear on both rack node one and rack node two. So let's take a look and see what's going on in the column store now. So as we suspected, all three tables have been brought into memory and the sales table appears twice in the list because part of it has been populated into memory on node one, part of it on node two. The customers table, on the other hand, has been completely populated just on node one, and the products table has been completely populated on node two. How do I know that they've been completely populated? Well, the populate status says complete, and the bytes not populated is zero. Now, if we look at the two entries for sales, that's not quite true. Sales, although the population status says complete, the bytes not populated is a non-zero value for both instances. And that's because we've only partially populated the sales table on both instances. The other instance, of course, having the other piece. So how can I confirm that the sales table truly is fully populated? We're going to have to look at another GV dollar view, and we're going to have to do a little math to confirm that. So the view we're going to look at is GV dollar IM underscore segments detail. And we're going to look at two different columns from that view. We're going to look at blocks in memory versus data blocks. So data blocks, that column is going to tell us exactly how many data blocks makes up the sales table. So there are 94,643 blocks in our sales table. 33,660 of them have been populated into memory on rack node one or instance one, 60, 
1,983 have been populated into memory on rack node 2. By adding those two numbers together, we get 94,643. So all of the database blocks belonging to the sales table are actually in memory. So now that we've done our math and we've confirmed that all of the tables are in the in-memory column store, let's take a look at what happens if I run a query while connected to remember service IM1 against all three tables that have been populated into memory. So my query is pretty straightforward. Three table join between sales, customers, and products. I'm specifying a join predicate between the three tables, but no filter predicates, and I've specified an aggregation. So when we look at the execution plan, we see each of the three tables is going to be accessed using a full table scan. And each of the full table scans currently believes that they'll be executed um, via the in-memory column store. But let's actually reconnect now, create a new session, and look at the session level statistics to confirm whether or not we really are going to be able to access all three tables from the in-memory column store or not. So I've created a new session so we can get zero session stats uh, for these critical session statistics that I'm going to look at. So things like how many rows are coming from the column store, whether or not um, some of the objects will be scanned from disk, and the logical reads. So now that the statement is executed, we can look at the same set of statistics again. We see we did get quite a number of rows from the column store, but what we also noticed is that one of the objects that we expected to get from the column store actually came from disk. That's what the statistic IM scanned segments disk means. And we noticed that one of the segments in our query, i.e. products, had to be read from disk because we couldn't read it from the column store. Why? Because we're connected to the IM1 service and that service is only able to um, see data that's in memory on the rack node 1 and get data from that particular rack node. So that's why products had to come from disk. We see that there are two tables scanned from in memory, that's sales and customer. We see that through table scanned IM. And we see about half the logical reads in the session came from the in memory column store. So let's actually set it up the way we would do it in real life. If all three of these tables are used by a single application and that application is only allowed to run on node one, I would have actually specified a distribute for service on all three tables that specified the IM1 service. So let's try that now. So what I've actually done is alter the three tables again and specify their in-memory attributes, but this time asking each of them to be distributed for service on IM1. Now, by altering them and changing their distribution, what will happen is that the three tables will be removed from the in-memory column store, and then they're going to be repopulated honoring the new distribute for service that has been specified. So if we take a look at the in-memory column store, we'll probably find that population currently in process. So just as I suspected we are, so right now we only have the customer table in memory on instance one. Sales and products have disappeared because we've changed their distribute for service attribute. And if we query again, we should start to see the other two objects beginning to populate. So as you can see, the sales uh, table has begun to populate. And if we continue to query GV dollar IM underscore segments, we'll actually be able to keep track of what's going on because the bytes not populated will act as a countdown for us. Oh, I wasn't fast enough. So now sales has completely populated. Its status has changed from started to completed. Bytes not populated is zero and products has also been populated. So let's try our query again. And if we look at the execution plan this time, we'll hopefully see the same thing, that we are accessing all three tables through the in-memory column store. And we are, so that's good. So now let's create a new session, zeroing out our session statistics, and run the query again to see what happens. 
Since we've populated all three of the objects into a single rack node, and that's the rack node that our service is allowed to run on, we got all of the information out of the in-memory column store this time. So you see IM scan rows is much higher than it was on our previous execution. The IM scanned segments from disk is zero because everything was able to be coming from the column store. You'll see the majority, 99% of the logical reads for the session came from the in-memory column store. All three tables were scanned from the column store. So there you have it, folks. Uh, you can now use that distribute for service to control exactly where an object is populated in a rack environment so that you can basically do application affinity if you wish and only have a subset of the rack nodes be used for a particular application. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, or follow me on Twitter or take a look at the blog. Thanks.